Oh man. Uh, the title sums it up, but uh, this uh, franchise needs to go extinct at this point. Hey guys, this is Frozen Ding Steves here, and welcome to another rant video. And today, I'm gonna be doing a rant on Transformers Age of Extinction. Um, so Transformers Age of Extinction is a uh, the fourth the fourth installment in the transformers franchise and the first to not have Sh shia labeouf and the og cast thank god for that and, and but it, it's barely a compliment though don't get me wrong and uh is directed once again by michael bay and stars mark Wahlberg, nicola peltz jack rayner stanley Ducey, kelsey grammar um sophia miles bing bing lee uh tj miller etc so the plot for Transformers Age of Extinction, um, it's about the, the aftermath of uh, Transformers Dark of the Moon where uh, Transformers have uh, you know, waged war on Chicago and after that um, Optimus Prime is badly hurt and, uh, is, and, and his truck is old and rusty and is being sold and, uh, and humans are hunting, hunting down the Transformers uh, alongside this bounty hunter named uh, Lockdown um, since after the war Chicago like the, the, the massive destruction in Chicago, um, yeah, basically humans hunt down Transformers and so when this mechanic named Kate Yeager finds, um, finds Optimus Prime, Optimus pretty much, you know, uh, find, uh, Optimus gets back into action, um, searching for his fellow Autobots and once again teaming up, reuniting to be able to take down Lockdown and the humans uh, from hunting them. So yeah, that's uh, basically the plot. So yeah, um, so the trans the Shia LaBeouf Transformers was uh, technically a trilogy. This one just feels like its own thing, and I know people say that the Transformers uh, should have ended with the uh, the third film. And I can see why, cause the, the third film was actually a pretty solid ending to the franchise. And, and uh, if you saw my uh, review for Transformers: Dark of the Moon, I actually didn't hate it. I actually didn't even think it was a bad movie or or a mediocre movie. It was just an okay movie, but by far my favorite uh, trans um, of the Bayformers movie. And Michael Bay said that uh, that was supposed to be the last uh, Transformers movie. Turns out Transformers Dark of the Moon is the highest grossing Transformers movie, so of course uh, Michael Bay wants to make another one just because uh, of how uh, successful Dark of the Moon is. And, and, uh, and uh, let me ask, uh, did we really need this movie? Did we um, really ask for this movie? And I know it could like serve as an epilogue to uh, to the Transformers franchise, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, no one really, um, uh, no one um, really asked for a fourth movie. Like, I don't know why this movie is being made, but of course we need uh, this. Of course we need to, like go sit through this some uh, movie. And I mean, the chairs were pretty good, but let's be real. All the Transformers movies have good chair and they end up chairs and end up and they end up sucking. Revenge of the Fallen trailer was actually good, despite being the weakest of the trailers. Um, this movie had great trailers. The Last Night had amazing trailers, but it was like it, it was kind of manipulative. I'll talk about that in my rant in the Last Night. Then, yeah, Transformers Last Night had amazing trailers in my opinion. Um, and. Um, yeah, Transformers Last Night Trailers were, were, were so good, and yeah, um, um, and, and Bumblebee's trailers, uh, the movie did live up to the trailers, it turned out to be even better than them, and Rise of the Beast had great trailers, so we'll see how the movie itself will turn out, but, so, um, you can clearly tell, uh, that, uh, these trailers are just mani manipulating you to think that there was gonna be the comeback of Transformers, that it's gonna be good, and Mark Wahlberg is such a great actor. He's actually a really good actor, and I really enjoy and I really enjoy his uh, movies. Like his, my favorite movie from him is definitely the the Departed. Even if he's not in the movie much, he's more of a side character. I don't care. Um, it's by far his best performance for me. So yeah, going to Transformers, I will say this: I love this movie when i first watched this movie in theaters i loved it i was like why do you hate this movie it's actually awesome because you no know, i didn't really care about the plot uh, even if i was i found i didn't really get the plot i didn't care because the movie was just so action-packed and just it just had so much action and i was just really having like such, such a fun time about 
watching this movie, seeing all the action and just uh, they're putting a big smile on their face. And I have re even rewatched it a couple of times. But that's just my 10 year old self. I was 10 years old when I saw this movie in theaters, and this was the first uh, Transformers movie I ever saw in theaters. So you can really imagine um, how you know how much um, of uh, how how much how my, my taste in movies were like back then when I. Um, when I was actually it first introduced, introduced to the Transformers movies prior to this one, and I thought that this was actually my favorite Transformers movie. Well, to be fair, I also loved the, I also enjoyed the last night that when I first came on, but that's a story for another day. That's a rant for another day. But as a critic, as a movie critic now, um, my thoughts on Transformers: Age of Extinction is garbage. Yeah, this uh, movie feels non-existent and yeah there's and yeah this movie is terrible and yeah i mean i don't really mind liking this movie because i was 10 years old back then so you know my mind works differently now i mean i didn't even realize that shaky camera explosions were pretty much a, a common criticism of michael bay i did see the reviews though for this movie and i bought that enjoying it but now, I think this movie is a pile of garbage, a pile of poop, and oh my god. And I know this movie has defenders saying, oh, at least it's a masterpiece in comparison to The Last Night. Honestly guys, I'd rather watch The Last Night over this one. It is that bad. This is my second worst Transformers movie, second only behind Revenge of the Fallen. And, and with a decent ending of Transformers Dark in the Moon, it sucks that Transformers has sunk in the ship but once again like Michael Bay just doesn't uh, wasn't even trying in this movie um, like it felt like my brother uh, said best it felt like he was drunk while uh, well uh, my, my cousin not my meant my cousin said it best Michael Bay felt like he was drunk while uh, making this movie and and I will say that um, um, I don't hate it as much as I used to do like a few years ago like I said, that it's one of the worst. I, I I said that this is one of the worst movies of all time, and I put it like um. Yeah, I said that th that this is w this was one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and I put this as my my second worst movie, 2014. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day will always be the worst movie, 2014. And oh boy, I am my red. I'm I'm definitely gonna rant in that that film in the future, but uh, but to be honest, guys, I actually don't think um. It's like the second worst. I'd say it's like six or seven in, in my worst movies of uh, 2014 list. And yes, it definitely does deserve to make my worst movies of 2014 list. But there are far more, far worse movies than this one. Like The Nut Job, which is now my second worst movie of 2014, and easily the worst animated movie that year. Um, yeah, The Nut Job, Legend of Hercules, uh, um, Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return, the Box shows, which is super overrated, um, and Annabelle, and also Exodus Gods against the, the fake, the so called Moses, the live action of Prince of Egypt, which fails to, to recapture the magic of Prince of Egypt. Although, even though it's just meant to be a Moses story, not, but it, um, I'm sure you know where, where I'm going with this, but it, is, it doesn't change the fact that Transformers Age of Extinction, uh, deserves to go extinct and I wish this franchise went extinct though in this film and I, I could have been really happy and relieved. Thankfully the, la the last thing was was um the last one. It was kind of an approval from this one but I will explain why in my review of Transformers last night. All gonna be a rant spoiler. But yeah now let's get into Transformers Age of Extinction or Stinction Stink or whatever you call it. So now the question is, are there any redeeming qualities to this movie? Not gonna lie, um, I would be lying if I say that there were none, because there were actually some good things to say about this movie. First of all, I like that this movie took place in Hong Kong. Um, I like this movie took, took place in Hong Kong, because Hong Kong is where I live, Hong Kong in the Philippines. Hong Kong is technically my second home. But my second uh, area with Philippines being number one. And I'm going to Hong Kong this summer, so yeah. Uh, I like this movie, Tokyo's Hong Kong, so it kind of feels nostalgic. So, uh, like, and this movie did cap, like, I love the scenery of Hong Kong, and I just enjoy seeing them, especially with some of my favorite landmarks, like the 
long bridge, like that super long bridge. Was like, and um, every time I go to I go to downtown with a bus, I always pass there. And it's just so cool, and um, and just the scenery. Some some great buildings. Like like I just love seeing Hong Kong. So yeah, um, and the Dino bus were absolutely dope. And I the, I thought the Dino bus were dope. Like they're they're really cool. Um, as far as the human characters go, I like I like that Chinese lady. Probably the only character I like in this movie. Uh, I think her name was uh, I forgot her name, but I'll just call her Bing Bing Lee because it's pretty much her actress name. Really enjoyed Bing Bing Lee in this one. Uh, maybe I'm just I'm just a huge fan of Asian. I'm just a huge fan of Asian girls, so I don't know why. But I thought she was actually a pretty badass in this movie, especially when she kicked those uh, guys' ass in the in the elevator scene. The elevator scene is probably my, my favorite scene in this entire film. The elevator scene. And, um... Um, some of the cinematography is, looks beautiful. Looks gorgeous. It's black, like, specifically in the end of the movie when Optimus, like, like took blasted off and went to space. And then we see Kate Yeager uh, looking, looking up Optimus guy. That, that looked beautiful. But probably the biggest compliment like, I can give this movie is the, the score. The score of this movie is, is incredible and just so memorable. Like whether it's the the score in the final battle or or my favorite track in the movie, the one when um when um the girl when um Tessa uh gets uh, kidnapped um gets kidnapped and taken and, and then we see Kate and uh, Shane running after Tessa and then we see the score playing great score. But other right, than those minor good things about this movie. Everything else in this movie, I cannot give us like any compliments to, cause this movie is just, the, and uh, this movie is just, oh uh, yeah, um, and yeah, this movie is just bad, like all around bad. Like, where do I even get started with this? Um, like, you know, um, actually, you probably know that action is my favorite genre of all time. And usually action movies, it's hard for action movies to be boring. But when it gets boring, oh god, it really gets boring. And this movie is just so boring. Like, yeah, pretty much the biggest problem with the movie is its runtime. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I love three-hour movies. I think three-hour movies are, are like two hours and 40 minutes plus movies. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm usually the defender of uh, three-hours movies. Like... I defend Black Panther Wakanda Forever's runtime. Making it two hours and forty minutes was the right decision, and it did not drag at all. Um, and uh, also, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League made four hour movies work. A four hour movies work. Some people complain about Endgame being too long with three hours. With I don't think that's the case here. Hour in the Way of Water being three hours long. Three hours long is suck. Three almost three and a half hours long. Great runtime for that film. It, I mean. I love the movies movie because um, um, it tells you that the movie is going to be epic, it's really going to be large in scale and it's going to be something. And I rarely hate, I rarely dislike movies that, that are three hours long or near three hours. I, never, I I barely say, oh, I don't like this movie, it's too long. Um, it's too long and it doesn't need to be long. Unfortunately, Transformers Age of Extinction is the exception to that because a near three hour runtime for this movie uh, certainly does not work for this movie. It is just painfully long. Like, it felt like, thankfully, it's not as boring as Revenge of the Fallen. If I, it, it felt slightly shorter than Revenge of the Fallen, um, except with, um, except yeah, it's just shorter than Revenge of the Fallen, but it, it doesn't say much because. This movie felt like nearly four hours long, and my god, I was like, oh my god, can this movie please end? Or at least just get to the Hong Kong part already. Uh, not as painfully, not as painful as Revenge of the Fallen, but still pretty boring, since this movie is like literally like, like you're just like sitting there wondering, what is, what the hell is happening? And speaking of happening, this movie has the worst writing in the Transformers franchise. I mean, Yes, yeah, sure, Transformers, um, Revenge of the Fallen has a bad plot, but, I mean, even, even Ray Tuck, at least it was, it was obvious that it was going to have a bad plot, barely have a plot, because, uh, there was no writer because of the writer's strike back when the movie came out, and 
there was no writer for it. Like there was no script, so they had to do everything they can to just make this movie without a script. So, well, I would definitely not forgive Revenge of the for that. Um, like I wouldn't call it the worst blood. Age of Extinction, on the other hand, um, it, on, on the other hand, it actually has a writer. Although Aaron Kruger wrote it, so yeah, he's such a writer. He can't write seriously. Aaron Kruger wrote this movie. I, I, I can say how bad he is all day long. Um, so there's no excuse for this movie to have you know feel like it doesn't have a script. Unfortunately, though, this movie, uh, the story in this movie, it feels like it feels like there was another writer strike back in like 2013. It feels like there was a, another writer strike by the time it came out because it's hard for me to believe believe that there is even a script and and. And with like actual like writing, there is no excuse for this book to be this stupid. And it just makes you like question what is happening. Yeah, there is just so much uh, going on. Like there is no clear direction. Like you know the whole plot about transform about the uh, humans hunting transformers. By the way, um, uh, um transformers. And by the way, um, why um, um, I mean. What's with all these uh, mech and stuff? Like, what's with Galvatron? What I mean, why? What's with the bump one? Like, there's just so much going on, and, and it's just like, um, it really does make you feel lost, and um, makes you uh feel lost, and yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say. Um, so yeah, this this is so yeah, like nothing came together in the plot, nothing was cohesive, nothing was going on, and it was just nothing but three hours of action explosions and swearing in it yeah most of the dialogue is just nothing but swearing although i, I don't have a problem with swearing in movies but they they swear in probably the, the it's so cheesy man they swear it feels forced and and yeah they and you know what? forget about the top criticism swearing i mean but yeah this movie is mostly just talking i mean but this movie, when, when there's no, um, when there's no action scenes, the movie will just be talking and talking and talking and talking without actually anything that's going on. Without, yeah, there's like nothing that's going on. And, um, and yeah, now let's talk about the human characters. I'm actually kind of, one compliment I, I can get this movie is that at least there's no more Sam in this movie because I hate Sam. And Mark Wahlberg, um, is objectively a better actor than Shia LaBeouf. So let's see what they, what they can do with Mark Wahlberg. Unfortunately though, it's not probably made with this new cast because Kate Yeager is not a very good main protagonist. Is he better than Sam? Yes, but that's not say much. Absolutely not. Yes, Sam is just, no, Kate is such an annoying father. All he does is just yell at the, I mean, he, get, well, he has no character development. All he does is just yell at the, his daughter um, Dr. Tessa, like, oh, Tessa, Julia, Tessa, 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 you're crying. Yeah, that's basically, that's uh, basically um, all this character is, just yelling and yelling and yelling and, and annoying yelling. Up to the point where you just want to just, yeah, that's great, shut up. But, you know what's worse is that um, he's probably one of the more tolerable characters in this movie. Besides, uh, well, of course, the, the Chinese lady, uh, he's probably one of the better characters in the film because there are far worse characters in this movie. Like uh, Tessa and uh, Shane, who is probably the most, the worst teen couple I have ever seen put the film period. I mean, their romance is just so cheesy and they're both super annoying. Like, um, like, oh my god. And, um, and, um, yeah. And yeah, I don't care about them. They're, they're, they kind of ruin the movie by their obnoxious yelling and annoyingness, and uh, and Tessa just being a terrible, uh, ter terrible daughter. Like both, like the father and daughter relationship in this movie just does not work uh, because they're just they have no chemistry to all, and they're all just spending wasting their time bickering on one another, and um, and Tessa just like, oh, I'm not gonna listen to my father. I'm just gonna do whatever it was. Cause it's my rules. And I'm not gonna, and he's not my dad. He should've saw my poor guy mechanic. And I'm gonna be buried. And that's basically her character in a nutshell. And, uh, um, what else is there? Yeah, the all about Sarah suck. Um, 
that that bots were cool. Um, but the other bots were just not very cool. They're all just yeah. All, some of them are, are annoying. John Goodman, what are you doing in this movie? Yeah, I forgot I mentioned John Goodman is in this movie. Um, like John Goodman is in this movie voicing an all but who is just super annoying. Like and his lines, you know, turn God, I'm a wicked warrior robot. Like, uh, that is, like really, like who wrote that line? Seriously, I want to know who writes these, who writes these lines. And yeah, the other bots are annoying. The new other bots, yeah, they are like annoying. Optimus is just Optimus has turned into such an arrogant leader where he's just like, oh, I'm the leader. You're gonna follow me. I'm the best. I'm so tough. You're gonna listen to me. Like, since when did he become just so arrogant? Uh, arrogant leader. He's not that. Dude. So that's kind of um out of character for Optimus and character from from Optimus and um and. Yeah, Bumblebee is just yeah. Uh, Bumblebee is kind of dumb, but like so dumb. Like he always like the yeah, Bumblebee is so dumb. Yeah, he has like a baby in this movie. Like like he literally just get rages and he literally gets a human into trouble and then just hides himself in the back when like you know like he 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 often just you know does something stupid to get the the humans in trouble and yeah, cause Bumblebee is just kind of dumb in this movie and. And yeah, also there's like this green Autobot guy. He's he's just so um he's just so um yeah so like annoying like uh this is how I sound uh, like ugh so annoying. And the Japanese guy is probably the most the most horrible of the Autobots, but that's definitely not not saying much. Um yeah, it's just and like yeah. Also, where do, where do these other ones come from? I wonder, like, why, do, why what's with these movies just constantly adding new other ones that, that just come out of nowhere? Um, okay, what else is there to say? Oh, yeah, let's talk about the, some of the other human characters first. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, there's like this annoying, uh, there's like this annoying, uh, Kelsey Grammer's villain just there. I don't know why he, I mean, he's kind of like the main villain, but eh, I, I couldn't care less about him. There's this uh, character named uh, Darcy who just, um, like you know, when when um, the character when Joshua and uh, Bing Bing Lee um went to, were like traveling to Hong Kong, she just like Darcy just you know comes out and says, "Hey guys," what pops out like, "Where did she come from?" Like I I never saw her in, in like for the rest of the movie. Or at least she's just maybe she's just forgettable. She could be a good character if only she just. Felt like she was just randomly there. And I just mentioned Joshua Joyce. Oh my goodness. The, Joshua has got to be the worst character in the movie. And it's not even close. Like, oh my god. This guy is just so annoying. I He really pisses me off every time I see him on the screen. He should, all he does is just yell, like, yells and panics and just make, and just really annoys you. Like, People think he's funny. No, he's not funny. Um, no, he's not funny. He's not at all. Uh, he's not at all. Um, yeah. Um, he's just he. I take back everything mean I ever said about Sam, cause I take Sam any day over Joshua Choice. Like, he's just beyond annoying. He tries to be funny, but he's not funny. I mean, his character motivation is supposed to be serious, but he's like, but it, I mean, he he's stupid. He I, I mean. He's just stupid, and his acting is just so over the top. It's just so cringy, like, and also be like, he's just so cringy. Like you know that that scene where he um, like that you know you know that scene where you know um basically um, um these characters have hit in, in hit inside a uh, Chinese um this Chinese restaurant during, during like this big war, like and then literally when they went inside, he was like. Oh, this is a perfect place to hide. Big clock, big glass box. No kid ever finds here. And then he just destroys things at the restaurant. Like, it doesn't mostly funny, yeah. And he's just un taking annoyance to the next level. And speaking of humor, oh my god. Like, the there's, there's comedy in this movie. And yeah, this is some of the worst comedy I have ever seen in a Potter film. Like, like this almost feels... this. 
almost feels like the death of comedy, and I'm not, I am not joking you. The comedy in this movie is atrocious. Like you know, um, you know when he says, oh, like what? It, you know when they're like walking at the Chinese uh, condominium, and then we see this son. Uh, a, bu a bunch of old women just walking so slow and it's like how do they get the F out of the way Chinese like is that supposed to be a joke like it's not funny it's just not funny and there are other jokes but I forgot what they were because I just don't care but um every time like there's a joke in this movie it just makes me roll my eyes in this one wondering what are you doing writers uh we're doing writers yeah um and yeah, um, what else is there? Oh yeah, let's talk about the action scenes. Oh my goodness, the action in this movie is terrible. The only good thing, the only good thing I, I can say about the action scenes is uh, the music that plays, uh, the, the the background music that plays during the action scenes. But other than that, yeah, the, the action scenes are terrible. It's nothing but action. Shaky cam and ex nothing but shaky cam and explosions taken to the next level where you, your brain just gets where these action scenes literally just gives you a headache and you're just wondering what is going on because the action scenes and even the editing is atrocious like and there's so much terrible scenes like so many things are uh, thrown in like you're just like there's so many things happening at once and you're just like wondering what is going on yeah like where do I get with this but you know what? You know what's the the worst scene um, in the entire film for me? Uh, the um the worst scene in in, in the entire film. Um, the the scene when Tessa gets uh, kidnapped and, and locked on a ship and um and um Kate and um Shane had had to like uh, rescue Tessa. Yeah, that the, the lock locked on ship scene is the worst scene in the film. Uh, I want to talk about locked on himself for terrible villain. He's not the worst villain. I take him anything over the fallen, but he's awful. He's literally just there just to be there. And the, the whole concept of, of his face uh, turning to a god, that is really dumb. But you may you, you may think, oh my gosh, an audible where his face turn turned into a god, that is so cool. No, no, it's not cool. Not even the slightest, but it is just kinda of dumb. And uh yeah. Yeah, that was pretty dumb like it's not funny but let's talk about lockdown ship scene yeah first of all Tess, um tessa is like you know just um wait no i'm gonna say about that but like there's so many things that are thrown in the movie like you may be wondering what is going on like like we see this creature that looks like the alien from the alien movies like it, the the one with Re 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 scott and james cameron yeah there's like a like like Tessa just stands there in the cage and you see his tongue licking and this alien which looks like a copy of those aliens I just mentioned. There's uh robot dogs and the weird alien designs as lockdowns uh you know goods and you can clearly see why I mean you can, you can clearly see how like random they were. Like they they, they seem so random. Um Lockdown ship looks like a pad of poo. Like it looks so like ugly, like I just wanna yeah, horrible shit. Um, and and also the lighting in that scene, like there's so much lighting. Like people who are people who are sensitive, like it could it's so lighting that it could literally kill people with seizures. So well, maybe maybe I might be a bit too heartless, but okay, maybe I might be, be a little bit too mean by saying that. I might, I might be going too far. I apologize, but I mean just. But I mean, people with seizures in this movie, oh my god, they're, I mean, I don't know how they're gonna survive a uh, lockdown ship scene, because that scene is just gonna hurt their eyes, it's gonna be painful for them. And, and it even feels painful for me, someone who doesn't have any seizures, like, who doesn't get seizures, like, even my eyes felt hurt from, I even got seizures from uh, that, that scene alone, the lighting in that scene, oh my god. And that scene has filled, is filled with so many cringe jokes, like, you know, like, like, you know, when, um, Shane just says, Oh, I surrender, I surrender to, to these, um, Autobots, and then he just, uh, shoots them. He, he just, you know, shoots them, and, uh, like, the gun just fires at them randomly. Like, that was not fun. That was just cringeworthy, yeah. Oh, my God. You know what? Screw it, I'm done talking this. And, um, the best part, and... The best part of the movie for me was, you know, the, the ending where 
Well, besides the elevator scene, the, the elevator fight scene, my favorite scene was basically when Optimus Prime le leaves Earth, leaves Earth, and then it just rolls, cuts the credits because, because it makes you be like, oh my gosh, thank God there's abomination of a movie is over. Thank God, finally. Whew. So overall, Transformers: Age of Extinction, while not as atrocious as, as I originally thought, is still a, a, a disaster of a movie. While it does have some a great soundtrack, and by the way, Battle Cry is a, is a, is a great song. One of my favorite songs in 2014. Well, a great soundtrack. Um, great um, like great soundtrack. Great character with Ming Ming Lee. Cool Dinobots. One good cinematography shot and just um, and well, I forgot to mention that. What was that one positive again? I. And also the fact that that took place and great scenery of Hong Kong, the movie just suffers with three hours of nothing happening but just the uh, exposition and just thro thrown in subplots where you, where you, where you'd actually question if this is the worst, if if this movie was even written. Yeah, this to me is the second worst Transformers movie, second only behind the Revenge of the Fallen. And you may ask me, what about the last night? Well. Spoiler alert, the last night is better than this movie, but it still sucks. It's still gonna get ranked personally. So yeah, um So yeah, I just um I just don't wanna see this movie again like like yeah whatever. Maybe I would watch this movie again if I wanna see the movie for how bad it is. I would watch this again, but yeah, it's just really bad. So with that said, I'm gonna give Transformers Age of Extinction a low two out of ten. Two out of ten. Um, there are worse movies out there, but when it comes to this franchise, yeah, it is one of the worst, surely. And it came so close to getting a 1 out of 10. Just with those, those small good things about it, just save the movie. So, so for my rant on Transformers Age of, Ext Age of Extinction, what is your opinion on this movie? Uh, is this your least favorite Transformers movie? Or do you prefer, to, or is this your worst Transformers movie? Or it's not the... Uh, um, comment down below, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for my rant on Transformers The Last Night. Bye guys.